Yesterday's shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde has left the nation shaken and shocked once again. And this morning, parents around the country are wondering how to best support their kids who may be feeling anxious just so they can feel safe again. Here to guide us is Dr. Harold Koplowitz. He's the president and medical director of the Child Mind Institute. And Jamie Howard, she's a senior clinical psychologist. Welcome to both of you. Um, you know, I was struggling with this because I feel like we've had this conversation. Too many times. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of sick of it. I don't know if you all are, right. but I feel like there is something that, something that needs to be done. But let's get right to the business at hand. I think first, our kids take their cues from us. If we're all wound up, which we can be, scared, which we are, our kids kind of mirror that. So do we start with us? Is it like put the mask on yourself first before you deal with your kids? So you must be calm when you're going to talk to your kids yeah. about this material. And you do have to talk to them about breaking this news because you don't want your kids getting information from a radio or a TV or from a classmate who, yeah. who might give a much more scary story. So yes, you have to break the news, but you have to be calm. And so if you're hysterical, if you're really angry, you have to calm down first before you're going to have this discussion. But it does depend on the age. I mean, mm -hmm. you, your kids are about the same age as my kids, mm -hmm. three and five and four and six mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. So like, actually, Haley said to me yesterday, because I was on the phone, I had heard about it. I said, oh my gosh, what do you need me to do? And she said, what happened? Mm -hmm. So what's the right answer to tell that age group? So when you're talking to little kids, yeah. it's really important that they feel a connection to you. They feel that they are loved yeah. and they are safe yeah. and they're with a trusted adult. So that sort of comfort and love is yeah. very important when delivering the message. Yeah. I had to tell my six and a half year old because I was concerned she would hear from others at school. So how, what was the, give me the, the script. Mm -hmm. Like, what did you say? Right. So I said, well, I'm going on the news tomorrow because I had like mm -hmm. an opening. So I'm going to have to leave a little earlier than usual. And then she was like, how come? Tell me what's going on. So it was sort of trying to bring it up naturally. And I said, mm -hmm. some kids got hurt. And people want to learn more about how to help kids who are sad because of that. So you start out really small and then let them ask questions. And then she said, how did they get hurt? And I did say they were killed. And then she said, well, who did that to them and why? And I said, I don't know why. Sometimes we don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. And that's okay to say I don't know. You just want to sort of pace the conversation. Let them kind of guide with let their them questions. Guide. And, even, and if they're asking rapid fire questions, yeah. also slow it down a little bit because sometimes kids want more information than they need. They don't need to be picturing any gruesome details. Yeah. They need to have the basics. And Dr. Koplowitz, with, with, I mean, TVs and phones and, you know, kids who are in junior high have phones. I right. mean, they, they can see what they're going to see. What can you as a parent do to make sure that your kid is not ODing on all of these scary, horrific images? So in the same way that you have a different conversation with a preschooler yeah. or a kindergartner, you're going to have multiple conversations with your middle school. So what do you say there? And you're going to say that this is really upsetting. I'm so upset that we have to discuss this again. But nevertheless, let's figure out what happened here and how do you feel about it. You want to know if they're really upset, if they're nonchalant about it. And you also want them to know that if they don't want to talk about it now, this conversation can happen an hour later, the next scared? day. What if they say to you, I'm scared now. I don't know if I feel scared going to school I, I now. Think, I think you have to give them some real facts. While this is horrific, it's still relatively rare. Yeah. And what are the safety precautions that their school has? What are the safety precautions you as a family have? And so you do the reality. You talk to them about how they are safe without minimizing the fear that they have. Could, you know, because you can understand it and say, I understand you're upset and frightened, but let's talk about why you don't need to be scared. You've been on our show a lot, okay? Uh, you've talked about this a lot. When you saw what happened and you knew you were going to come in here and you're going to talk about this again, what were you thinking for you? Well, I, I have to tell you, I'm so upset about this because these are avoidable tragedies. There are, you know, I always feel I'm being scapegoated because I'm a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. It's, there are lots of countries in the world where there's mental illness. We're the only country where we have these massive shootings, and that's because we need more gun control. We need background checks. Mm -hmm. We're not saying people should lose their guns, but you don't give an 18-year-old a gun without really checking ahead of time. And maybe 18 is not the right time. Maybe 24 when the brain is more mature so that you don't have an impulsive, angry, and mentally impaired person getting a hold of a weapon of destruction. Yeah. And this has to stop. I mean... I, I'm all in favor of prayer. I'm all in favor of, you know, better mental health systems. Mm -hmm. But guns are in the house. 
And that's the problem. And, and the house is America. And we have to figure out a way to make those guns safer because otherwise children will lose their lives. Yeah. Is there, when you, when you talk with kids in your practice, um, is there a way that you could do, like, I don't know, like, say something, say something that, say something to them beforehand that might kind of ease their fears? Because I feel like everybody's on pins and needles mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. well, we've been talking a lot about having gratitude, right? So that's one thing we can do to, to help kids to anchor to mm -hmm. the present moment. Like, we want to send as many positive wishes and, yeah. like, be helpful to the families who are traumatized right. right now yeah send money to for treatment and send cards and send ways letters to help ways yeah. to help yeah. and for us to sort of anchor ourselves to gratitude for what we have right now and commitment to trying to change things well, you know it's funny i had jay shetty on earlier and he always talks about meditation except today he said, today is not a time for meditation. Right. It's a time for action. action. Mm -hmm. And that's what I keep hearing from everyone I'm talking to. It's like action, action, and kids, action. And kids feel better when you give them something to do. Right. Whether it's uh, writing a note, whether it's taking a walk, whether mm -hmm. it's talking about how safe we are and yeah. how grateful we are that we're okay. But also, what are we going to do for the other right. people? Let's who are, right. Let's help. Let's help. Thank you both for being here. I really appreciate it.